Hey everybody, headed south on I-65, just south of Clanton. And as you can probably tell by the view of the background here, it's raining, and it's raining pretty heavily. And it's something that I've always found very annoying trying to drive in the rain. It's always something that's kind of a pain for me. Uh, of course, it, it hurts your visibility, and it's annoying when you have to make a pit stop to head and, and get some gas or get something to eat. But you know, the funny thing about rain is that I think a lot of the ways in which we view it comes down to a matter of perspective. There's a great country song called Where I Come From, Rain is a Good Thing. And I wouldn't say that it's necessarily my favorite, but it does point out a really important lesson about perspective. Because when you look at the scripture, it's very often that people will pray for rain, that they desire rain because they saw rain as something that is good for the crops, it increased the amount of food that was around, and the point of that country song is kind of the same thing. That when you're looking out in the country, people see rain as a good thing because it makes the crops grow, it's something that refreshes the earth. And another thing that you can view from the scripture is that the original rain that came, of course, in the flood of Noah was something that was very powerful and destructive and destroyed all of humanity. And yet, rain is also the way that God chooses to bless the earth by giving increase. And I really think that it goes down to this analogy, which I heard a long time ago, which is happiness, if it had a physical shape, there was a physical form or a thing that you could use to describe happiness, that shape would have to be in the form of glass. Now, the interesting thing about glass is you can't always see it. If it's clear and it's clean, it's very easy to miss that it's there. But just like happiness, all you have to do is shift your perspective just a little bit, and you will realize that the thing that you had been looking for this whole time was actually there all along. I think that's what the Bible means by being content and finding joy. And this is something that is a frequent theme of Paul's writings, which is very appropriate considering several of his writings and the ones specifically where he talks about, I'm thinking of the book of Philippians, for example, are pieces of scripture that he penned while being persecuted for his belief. And so the difference in joy and contentment and happiness, and happiness is, is a good thing. I'm not against happiness. I don't want anyone to think that. But the reason that I say joy is actually deeper, joy is the thing that is actually like glass. So I think that quote that I gave a second ago needs modification just a little bit. Because happiness can come and go. It's a feeling. It's an emotion. Sometimes it's there. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you have no control over it. Finding joy in the Lord is a completely different concept. Because it is something that is there regardless of your circumstances, regardless of how you're personally feeling that day. It's not something that is subject to the conditions of life. It's something that you make a choice and a decision that you are consciously choosing to be joyous. And the way that a Christian finds that joy, the way that the Bible describes that, is that it only comes through knowledge of salvation in eternity. Knowing that there is an all-powerful God that despite having enough power to create the entire universe, loves us and cares enough for us to sacrifice his only son. The fact that there is a God that thought enough of us to give up his only beloved son so that he might be able to again have communion with us and to save us from the condition of our own sin. I mean, how can you know that and believe that and be anything but joyful? <laughs> Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women.
like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.